God, my God, my God. Listen, everybody, come on, come on, come on in the room. Come on in the room. And I want you to go ahead and invite people on uh, quickly, quickly, quickly. I know this is Friday night and a lot of people are doing one thing or the other on their weekend. But I pray that everybody is ready for the living word tonight that will come forth. I tell you, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. So we're going to give you one more minute to worship. And that's all. And we're going to get started tonight. Click that share button. Click in your groups. Let's get everybody on. Please give those hearts and let us know that you are with us. You are celebrating what God is doing. Come on, everybody. Periscope, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. I don't want y'all to worry about the trolls tonight. But uh, God is going to do something in your life that's spectacular, that's different, that's new, that's fresh. And we're going to thank the Lord tonight before we even get started. We're going to thank him in advance for the wonderful things that he's been doing. Welcome everybody to day three of our glory to glory from glory to glory 21 day corporate fast. Come on everybody. Come on in. Hallelujah to God. Come on.
People of God, tonight we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome, we welcome you, hallelujah to God, it's fine, hallelujah to God, hallelujah to God, thank you everybody for joining us on our 21 day fast, this is day three and I want you all to come on, clap those hands, come on and clap those hands and let's celebrate every one of you who have pressed your way in, come on, now the real folk, it's going to be with us tonight because it's day three. And I'm used to folk, you know, camping out, throwing out the town on day three. So the only the real folk going to be in here with us tonight. I can assure you that. Hallelujah to God. Listen, we've been fasting corporately since last year when the Lord began to call us uh, to do this. And uh, I tell you, only the strong will survive and only the serious will survive. Tonight, we have a word for you. And I just thank God for what he has been doing uh, from day one and day two. Hallelujah to God. I tell you, such grace here. Uh, right. uh, the people of God are even saying that it's very easy. It's much easier this time mm -hmm. uh, than the times before. So we are certainly uh, celebrating our God for giving us the grace that we need to push. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about why we need to fast, why we need to push, and then we're going to get into the message. We thank you so much for sharing the videos. Those of you who are participating, not just you know, spectating, but you are participating. You are typing. You are doing hearts. I see you. I go and look at Periscope. I see how many hearts y'all hit. I'm looking at, I want to see who's really involved. I'm looking at Facebook. I go to Facebook and see who shared my videos. Why I do that? Because I really want to know who's in it with their hearts. You understand? There's a lot of spectators, but I'm telling you, we are celebrating those of you who are with us, who are saying, listen, come on, I'm cheering you on. And as you all are pouring into us, we are pouring into you. So we are giving something in exchange. And we are thankful that you all are showing up with us. We are praying for your needs, your prayer requests. We are praying over those that have sent in emails, those that have sent in inboxes, those that have given their names on the wall uh, and in other places you have put your name. We are locating them every single day. So thank you so much. We are going to periodically do roll call. We're not going to do it tonight because, again, I want to see who's going to be with us on tomorrow the faithful committed folks are those that god is going to be faithful to that's all i'm saying the faithful committed are those that god is going to be faithful to amen in a relationship come on i don't want no half side in nothing if I'm giving 100%, I want 100% in return. I don't want 25% and I'm giving 100 Amen. Come on, ladies. You don't want that man giving 15% and you putting in 125%. Uh, something wrong with that. That's a lopsided relationship right there. Somebody going to be unhappy. Oh, Lord. Come on. And what are we doing with God? What are we doing with God? How are we committed to the faithful one? He is faithful. He will remain faithful to us. We have to show that we are committed people of God. The children of Israel, like uh, the children of Israel, the Israelites, they were so tossed between two opinions and tossed between what they wanted to do by polarism and schizophrenia. You know, the children of Israel continue to say, well, Lord, I want to serve you. And then they go back and go a horn at the other gods and building calves to bow down to. And God has been looking for a faithful people for many generations. I want to know, he want to know, are you the people of God who will be faithful to him? In the end times and that's why we're doing what we're doing for no other reason just to develop such a stability on the inside of your spirit so that you're not tossed around and you can be solid and stable and get somewhere in God amen hallelujah to God so listen I'm prophetess Yvette Young this is my husband Dr. Hill amen amen everybody and uh, we are back on the day third of our uh, ultimate day sacrifice three. day three <laughs> of our ultimate sacrifices and remember that sacrifices are carry weight this is why sacrifices are measured uh, you know whoever gives more in some places you see in the bible how uh, some people we are you know accustomed to just bringing the turtle dove and bringing the animals and so forth but some people reach a place where they have to do the extraordinary and some of them end up you know putting their, their lives on the line 
So the magnitude of their sacrifices also uh, 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 drew God to counter that do their sacrifices and they end up doing the extreme. And so when you see the Lord appearing to people in the Bible, it's not everybody that you read in the Bible that you hear and the Lord appear to them. No, it's not everybody. Some folk have to grind with the book of the Lord day and night, you know, and it shall not depart in your mouth, you know, just keep reading it. But there are some folk that God had to appear to them personally. Like the case of Abraham, you see God saying, this thing that I'm trying to do, shall I hide it away from my friend? That is amazing. So in the Bible, you're going to see some men, they walked with God, some dined with God, some wrestled with God, some talked with God, some, you know, sat with God. Different uh, things were taking place as they came together into a place. They were able to appear and look at him, and he was able to look at them. I mean, angels were coming around these individuals, you know. So it was such a, a powerful thing for some of these uh, people in the Bible to interact with such a place in God. And today you look at the, the, the body of Christ, the people of God today. They, it's like if you mention an angel around some people, they will tell you that, you know, maybe God have killed all the angels. The angels don't exist anymore, but demons exist. So it's totally weird. It's to show you how bizarre religion can turn people, you know, to, you know, to begin to twist, twist reality from, you know, with false. You cannot believe false more than you can believe the real. And that's what we are here to do, to show you that the real still, you know, exists. That God, you know, is the same God that walked with Abraham, that walked with Enoch, that with, walked with Isaac, uh, that walked with Jacob, that walked with uh, uh, Noah, that walked with all these men, Ezekiel, Isaiah, some of these mighty people of God that went, you know, beyond, the other, beyond this life. <laughs> Are you guys with us tonight? Can you handle a little bit more? We don't want to keep you long tonight, but we do want to release the word that the Lord has given us today. Um, where do you want to jump in from? Uh, we can go in in the same place. Uh, you know, the, what we talked about, the power of God, how people, you know, pursue after the power. We want to deal with that aspect, the, how some people of God uh, make a wrong calculation out of, you know, desperation, out of desperation, some of them would actually, you see them, you know, they are going after the power of God. They just want the power of God. They just want the power of God. But if you begin to, you know, listen to them or the approach that you are using to try to, you know, to gain the power of God, you see that it's almost uh, uh, unscrupulous in a way to an extent that they are trying to, you know, just get the power of God and, and run off without, you know, looking to ask God, how does things really work? What do you want? What do you like? Uh, is there any other way that, you know, we can work together and make these things happen? So they just want the power. And that's where a lot of them make a terrible mistake. We are going from glory to glory, from glory to glory. The scripture tells us that we are moving from one level of faith into another level of faith into a realm of faith now we want to talk tonight about god releasing something to your life that's very peculiar god has many treasures for his people and this is why you will always hear us say things like it's not just about sitting on the pew uh coming to the church to do our uh, religious rhetoric uh, traditional rituals, uh, uh, you know, that's not pleasing to the Father because the Lord did tell us that the traditions of mankind is what makes the Word of God of none effect. So not you're exactly. not seeing any effect or the power of God on display today in many places, in many cases, that's right. because it is ritualistic in nature. Mm -hmm. And, and traditional in nature. And, and, and when you see the traditions that we do all the time, all the time, nothing <laughs> ever changes. It's a routine. In other words, yeah, it's a routine that we do not allow God to have free course, free reign, so that he alone is directing our 
pro uh, programs mm -hmm. or uh, whatever it is that we want to do or we aspire to do if the spirit of the living God is not in it or he is not the one who is orchestrating it, you're not going to get the results of heaven. That's so right. God is always looking to get to us his results because he understands where he's trying to get his people to be at a certain place, at a certain time. Mm -hmm. He has a calendar. He has things uh, that in his mind that he is trying to get us to an expected end. The scheduling, yes. And so because of, of our rituals, there are people today that have never had contact with the spirit of the living God. Or they may say something like this. Oh, I felt goosebumps today in the church. And that's all they even know about the spirit. Oh, I felt goosebumps. Mm -hmm. But it is beyond feeling goosebumps. Glory to that's God. Right. There is something more that awaits you that God is expecting his people to reach. Now, here is, the, here is it in a nutshell. You can have whatever it is that you have an appetite for. Everyone does not have an appetite to go deeper into the realms of God. That's true. Deeper into the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So they don't mind camping out. I'm trying to break it down. They don't mind camping out in religiosity. It's, it's, but religiosity is not doing us any good. Look at the world today. How many billions of religions... Yeah. How many billions of religions and we still can get along and we still don't see it the same way. Mm -hmm. As the Lord said, I'm praying for them to what? Speak the same language, Come to one. be in one accord. And we cannot see that because we are not allowing the spirit, come on, to rule supreme. So we have... A lot of man-made religiosity that keeps us away from what the Father is trying to accomplish in the body of Christ. That is powerful what you just said because as you are saying it, I'm scanning through the scriptures like a computer system. <laughs> I tell you, the only thing that makes it possible for the people of God to become one is to make sure that you have one same life. And only the Holy Spirit can make that possible. Without having the same life, everybody will live the way they want. This is why when God comes to you and he begins to pull you to himself, watch what he's doing. He is looking to bring real change into your life. How would you change a life? You exchange life. Yeah. Because you cannot live my life. I cannot live your life. You are not me. I am not you. You are not God. God is not you. But... As his life begins to blend into your life, that blending can cause your life to begin to change. Because it takes nature to change nature. That's what happens. And if his life begins to overtake, override our DNA, our gene, what will happen is that the transformation will begin to occur. occur. We are moving from who we are to who he wants us to be in him. We are taking on his life. So when you hear, put on the Lord Jesus Christ is different from, you know, receiving Christ into your heart. When you receive Christ, it was a confession. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. But to put on Christ as a superimposition, people of God, and only the Holy Spirit can bring that type of experience with him. So we have to know that you cannot change. This is why, in fact, the Bible says, by their fruits. Ye shall know them because why? The character of a person is a spiritual DNA. You cannot easily change it. Unless something else gets into the very gene or the life of that person. That's how you are able to discern. That's how you are able to walk by inspiration to know when the enemy, when it is the person, when it is the enemy, when it is God and so forth. That's why you are able to know if this is an angel, if it is, this is something else. So there's parameters that God wants to achieve with us in the spirit realm to bring us to a place of real transfer, you know, uh, not just only change and transformation, but unusual transparency and clarity. Are you all following us? Are you all with us? Are you all, come on, let me see 
some hearts. Let me see something going on out there. I need some activity. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm an audience participation preacher. Come on. Come on. Let me see what's going on out there. All right. I see Periscope. I see Periscope. I see Periscope. Come on. I see Facebook. All right. God bless you all. <laughs> Listen, here, here is what we're trying to say. Here is what we're trying to say and articulate uh, the best way we know how. I'll tell you, it's not easy to articulate revelation. It's not. Unless the Lord gives it to you and help you to bring it into this day's language. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's very hard to articulate it. Sometimes you see things and you just cannot put it together. You're like, Holy Ghost, come on, help me, you <laughs> know, to, to explain it, to articulate it to the people of God. But here is the thing. Let, let me take you to Nicodemus. Uh, with Jesus because we have to number one start with you have to become born again now those of you who have had a born again experience I don't know if you were coerced down to the full forefront by the mm -hmm. altar you know how they used to do yeah. you know go and ask your neighbor if they want to go down to the front with you <laughs> that is not true conversion oh here I go oh, my God. boy oh boy oh boy let, let, let me say this, let me say this, because we have to have a true conversion in order to have a nature transformation. That's right. See, what's going on today is very simple, it's very simple. Anyone can come to the building, hallelujah to God, and anybody can take a trip down to the altar. Come on, somebody. We were coerced throughout our childhood, going into, you know, children's church and then youth church and, you know, ask somebody if they want to come down with you. So we go down and we repeat the prayer, but there was no heart change. I'm because telling you there's something. there's no conviction. There was nothing that was going on on the inside. So when I went down to the front, I went because I was coerced to go. And then I left mm -hmm. out of the building and went to the club. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. There was no nature change. Mm -hmm. No conviction, no conversion. My life didn't change. I didn't pick up the fruit of the spirit. <laughs> I just walked down to the front. Because they say, go and ask your neighbor. If they want to come down with you, only the spirit of the living God. We're going to try to bring this thing all the way to where it needs to be in the body of Christ today. People are trying to do things without the spirit and they are not getting heaven's results That's because right. it takes the spirit of the living God. Hence, we have preachers that are telling us today, it don't take all of that spiritual stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, how in the ham sandwich <laughs> are you going? <laughs> are you going to get something that is spiritual out of the heavenly realms? Come on. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah to God. Into your earthly existence. How are you going to fellowship with earthly things? God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Come on, follow the connection. The reason people are not being transformed is because there is no contact and there's no opening. There's no door inviting the Holy Ghost in. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on, people of God. We walk in the building, there's no power of God. Mm -hmm. People walk in with their sickness, they stay sick. Mm -hmm. They walk in with their demon, they stay demonized. They yeah, walk wow. in with their crack cocaine, they leave out and they go hit the pipe. Mm -hmm. Listen, people of God, without the spirit of the living God, you cannot have what heaven is telling you that you can walk in through the word of God. That's right. Let alone do the heavenly things and 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 begin to and you know entertain things that are non-terrestrial. <laughs> We're talking about moving into the celestial realm, ascending into the holy place because I, I'm reminded of the scripture that said there are many blessings in heavenly places. Come on. And, and if they're in heavenly places, can anybody tell me how am I going to get it out of the heavenly realms? Can anybody out there tell me how am I going to get it? Come on, talk back to me. <laughs> See, heaven is a spiritual climate. It's a it's spiritual atmosphere. It is a realm of eternity and infinity. Oh, yes, Hallelujah Come to God. Now. And if we do not pursue after having our nature 
transformed. Mm -hmm. We will remain carnal and flesh and never get to the higher things we'll of the now. realm of the spirit. And we want people to go and come and go higher, higher momentum, higher. Come on, you need to be functioning with God until you have the image of Christ and the image of God. That's right. You need to not recognize yourself. Folk from your past need to not recognize you. Listen, listen, today people are not having a nature change. That's why the world and your old friends, they don't see any change in you. <clears throat> Their lives, your life doesn't bring any conviction to them. Yeah. You, you understand? You understand? Come on, people of God. Because we want you to have physical physical contact with this spirit. Yes, you can feel the manifested presence of God. And yes, you can get into the realm of the spirit and see his face and see what he wants you to see because he will let you see his hand when he decides to he will let you see his feet you know he will just show you his feet and just see what you're going to do with it he'll show you his hand his nails in his hand and see what you're going to do with it he can show up in his manifested power uh, uh the brilliance or the the majesty of the, the the beauty of his spirit or he can show up as a regular human being mm -hmm. it depends on what he wants to do but are you ready and willing to go deeper into that place or are you ready to just stay here and camp out in religion that is what we're saying. That it's okay to 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 do, you know, little fellowshipping here and there. But when it comes down time for you to break out of your chains, for you to rise up and to to make an impact in your generation or in your community or in your state, wherever you're called to do. I hear people say that they're called to the nations. How you call to the nations, you have not even started from the basis. You haven't even dealt with the principality in your community, but you're called to deal with national principalities. We are crossing over too many lines and things are not connecting because because we are out of order without the spirit of the living God leading us to show us how to navigate in the realms of the spirit. That's what we're here to do to help you. That's what we hear. That's what we're saying. We want you to be able to go up and grow up, grow up, go up into the places where you can be established, where you can walk as mature sons, where you can walk as mature daughters. You're not tossed between Satan and God and tossed between these all, all these kinds of opinions. And come on, you follow me tonight. You follow me. So let's go deeper because he is calling for us to come into that holy place where our lives will never be able to revert back to what it was. When people tell me that they're struggling and they tell me that they've been working for the Lord for so long, but now they are backsliding. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. How did the door open for the enemy to come in and to get you off and pull you backward when heaven is calling you forward. When heaven is calling you upward. When heaven has something so amazing for your life. Something beyond what we see. We see casualties all the time. We see the pain. We see the agony. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You know, you are speaking here. I'm listening. And a scripture, a scripture just came before my eyes. If Jesus Christ with all that anointing, pay attention to what we are saying here very carefully. If Jesus Christ with all that anointing, the fullness of the anointing on his life, and yet the Bible said that there was no comeliness that any man should desire him. Imagine what the church would look like without the anointing at all. Flesh and carnality. They will repulse everything. They will push away everything. Imagine if Jesus, 
is a, a man acquainted with sorrow and grief, with all those anointing on what that was on his life. I'm talking about the fullness, the anointed one and his anointing. Nobody know the anointing better than him. And yet you didn't see the whole world running after him or his own people running after him. He was alone, isolated, and so forth. There was no pull in attraction. But let me show you the what brings unusual attraction. This is why we are talking about the glory of God. Because as I show you some of these scriptures here, you will see why the need for that change and that transformation. The glory of God, God uses his glory to beautify, to make you gorgeous, to make you pretty. When you see people in the world today, you see people are running after the extraordinary. Oh, she is so beautiful. Oh, he is so handsome. Oh, he is so educated. He is so intellectual. He is so intelligent. Uh, he, is, he, he can play uh, sports. And nobody can play so be like him or her. So they are looking at something that has ever been. So when God begins to take you into the deeper realm, he is bestowing unusual beauty, excellence over your life to make you beyond comparison. That's why in the glory, there's no envy. There's no jealousy. Because every single person in that dimension are so much loaded that they don't need what you have. <laughs> God, if you look at Isaiah chapter 60, you can type it for the people of God. Isaiah 60, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 60, verse 13. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fig tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. To make you unique, totally unique. This is the transformation that the glory of God brings into your life. To make you spectacular. The purpose, see, 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 why I like to start from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z is because if we bypass the process, yeah. I just saw somebody say I backslid because of the pain. Watch this. Hmm. Your pain was positioning you for the glory. That's right. Listen, you cannot have the glory of the glorified Christ as our great example Without suffering. Now, the lies from the Western church that say you don't have to suffer anything. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. why people backslide because they were not built on the proper foundation. And this is why the word of God tells us if any other man come and try to build another foundation on that which was already built, let that man be a curse. And that's why people in the people in the church. They're not stable. Mm -hmm. They are unstable. You got to hear what I'm saying today. Watch this because if we do not keep this as our foundation mm -hmm. and we're going off and peering into the realm of the spirit, we're going to get jacked up out there in the spirit because we need direct contact, but we need foundational principles That's that right. would keep us intact. My balance, God, balance. you're going to have to. Oh, my God. If you go one way that God is telling you not to go, if you do and go down this avenue, he say don't go. If you don't develop a relationship with the Holy Ghost, who are you hearing from? What voice are you going to respond to when you don't know the voice of your daddy? Yeah. There are many strangers that are speaking. That's right. And you will follow the stranger if you don't know the Holy Ghost, yeah. which is the spirit of Christ and the spirit of God. That's correct, man. We have bypassed because we have entered.
entered into prophetic ministries and all we're prophetic, but you don't know your word. That's mm -hmm. why I tell you, you know, you're going to come to me. I'm going to teach you your word. You want me to <laughs> prophesy? I'm going to say, go and read the book of John and then come back and tell me what you read. And I want to see your notes. I want to see if you are ready to study to show yourself approved unto God, mm -hmm. not to me. Because I don't need you to please me. I need you to please God. Any leader that is trying to get you to God wants you to please God. And you got to be ready to stand upon the proper foundation of the living word of God. And there come, that, that is when you will be stable. Nobody will be able to pluck you out right. of the hand of God. Sweet. No yes. power, no pain, no affliction, no witch, no warlock, no hex, no curse, no spell. None mm -hmm. of it will be able. No None of it pressure. will no be suffering. able. None of it will be able. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus said that I overcame and you shall overcome. I made an open show of the principalities and you will have the victory. You will conquer because I went to hell, got the keys, and I came back and gave them to the church. Church. The church don't know the keys that they have because the church don't have the proper foundation. We bow down to people, kissing people's shoes and kissing people rings. rings. And we're waiting on somebody's mantle. And millions of people are waiting on one person's mantle. But which one of y'all going to get it? Uh, well, I, that's what I'm waiting to find out. Which one of y'all going to be the son? No, See, it don't work that way. He's going to cut the mantle in pieces and give everybody a little piece. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know which one of y'all going to get the mantle. How which many one of y'all? Come on, somebody. We have misconstrued the gospel of Jesus Christ. And people are not stable in God. They're not. And we are trying to get you... Hallelujah. Come on. Oh my God, this book was written of the Christ child. This book was written of the king of all kings. This book, he came in the value of this book. Prophet Isaiah preached about Jesus. Ezekiel preached about Jesus. Moses. Jeremiah, Moses preached about Enoch. Micah, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah preached about Jesus. Oh my God, my mm -hmm. God, my God, my God, the my God. The people of God. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, come on. Woo! We're going back full circle. Yeah. Because we know how to kill a witch, but we don't know Christ. We know how, yeah, you know, people today, come on, come on, I'm going to show you how to kill a witch. But what if Jesus said, keep the witch alive so I can save her? Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. Come on. There are many times huh, we went after our enemy and the Lord said, huh, they ain't dead yet because I want them saved. Yeah, <laughs> oh, them. come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You got to have such a relationship with the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of God. I know people right now say, I want to know what my gift is so I can function in my gift. Well, honey. Do you know God? No, I don't know him, but I know I got a gift. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. You got a gift who it came from. Okay, so you don't want to know who gave you the gift, but you just want to function in the gift. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of folk in the church, they functioning in the gift and they're dirty. They're masturbating. Uh-huh. They're fornicating. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're committing adultery. Yeah, don't care. Lying, stealing, thieving. Don't give a flip. Gossiping. All kinds of things they are doing. And they want to function in the gifts. And that's why we're lopsided. And God is trying to get us balanced. Uh-huh. That's right. Well, we're racist. And we can't stand the white folk. And when the white folk can't stand the black folk. And the Asian don't want to come to the church. Hallelujah to God. Oh, my God, tonight. You still heard from what the slave master's done. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, my God almighty. You still got a stronghold in your life. And you can't stand a black man. God is trying to get to the church because he said, listen, I need to clean up some stuff today. My people that ran off, they don't have my fruit. They don't have my spirit. They don't have my character. And they're trying to function in my gifts. <laughs> Ah, they don't want to know me, but they want my gifts. Yeah. Oh, my God. They want a platform. They want a microphone. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. uh, they want a Bentley. They want a Range Rover. They want a mansion, but they don't want me. They won't suffer with me. They don't want, pers they don't want to be persecuted for Christ's sake. Mm -hmm. They don't want that. And we're trying to build the people because whether you know it or not, sweethearts, America... It's getting ready to come underneath the heat. 
Uh-huh. There's many other places underneath the sun right now. Real Christians are being persecuted right now. And it doesn't matter if it don't come on CNN. It's happening. You need to know what kind of news to stay connected to. Because Jesus said what will happen to his true disciples. Yeah. And if we do not prepare you from foundational principles, then when you start going up into the realm of the spirit, the enemy can knock you, just like I was telling y'all yesterday. I got up there in the realm of the spirit, and the enemy pushed me so hard on that flying saucer and pushed me so hard to the point where, oh, my God, it was like, you know, I lost my breath. He took my air out of me, and I had to recover and recuperate. And the enemies are hitting at our homes today, and a lot of us are saying, I can't take no more. Because we're not built upon the rock. Yeah. See, if we bypass this, we can't get to the glory. If we bypass this, that's why you have preachers today. They will come preach for $60,000. $80,000. $80,000. Honorarium. $100,000. Before they get on an airplane, they must have half down. Come on, somebody. Jesus, how much was his honorarium? <laughs> to die on the cross, you mean, or to raise the dead, or to heal the sick? Which one? How much did you have to pay Christ to heal the woman with the issue of blood? Well, the doctors took all the money. She didn't have nothing, so which means she danced, She wasn't supposed to be healed. Can we get you to come without an honorarium? No, today you got to talk to somebody, secretary. You can't even build relationships today because, you know, they want to be Mr. Big Shot. Well, if I can get Jesus on the main line and he is the king of glory, I don't need you on my phone because you acting too big and you greater than Christ himself. And you don't know where he is in his glory. You cannot even find him. Today, we have gotten some <laughs> things God. misconstrued. Folk don't want to acknowledge you. They don't care about you. All they want to know is how many people you pushing. How big is your building? How big is your bank account? And don't really want to do the work. Oh, I'm coming after it today. Because yeah. at the end of it all, honey, at the end of it all, people are making this thing look like it's glitz and it's glamour. And I can tell you that when the lights are off, and the curtains are closed. Satan is busting up at the church today. It is not glitz and glamour. And if you do not have the power of the living God working in you. That's right. The character of the living God working in you. Shielding your life. It will be ran over. Damaged. They ain't going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you that. Because we should have been more prepared than we are looking at the lives of the first disciples of Jesus Christ. No, today folk don't want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. They want to be, you know, somebody else's disciple mm -hmm. because they trying to get something from their own selfish motives. But tonight, I'm coming in the house tonight mm -hmm. because we got to get our priorities straightened out in the body of Christ today. Honey, ain't nothing glamorous about this thing. Oh my God, you got to fight hard for your family. You got to stay up at night declaring to the atmosphere, declaring to the powers uh, that you will not step foot in my house. Yeah. Ain't no fun and, in this. And some of them want to push in by force. So you are going to wrestle, you are going to fight. What we're saying to you, <laughs> Jesus outlined it for us. That's right, clearly. To get to the glory, Jesus had to die on that cross. Oh, yes, ma'am. And today, if you talk about the cross, they don't give a flip about hearing nothing about the cross. Mm -hmm. All they want to do is do some little funny skit, bring in a stupid old bunny rabbit and some stupid eggs and make you think that that is Jesus the Christ. It has nothing to do with Christ. Oh, my God. And today, people of God are fooled by walking in the buildings, getting all kind of demons in you from walking into a polluted church. Mm -hmm. You walk into the polluted church, you come out with devils. That's right. Y'all don't want to hear me tonight? Mm, yeah, they will. Some will. Some will. If there's no <laughs> prayer going forth, when I walk in a building, the power of God should be so 
so electrifying, electrocuting. Yeah. When I walk in, my demon should be trembling. Hey, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm on the wrong ground. I got to get up out of here. Yeah, that's right. Ah, when somebody walk in the building for real and the power of God is there. La, 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 bah, bah, and there are angels over that territory. Oh, okay. And Come there on. are angels uh, in the back door. Uh -huh. And there are angels uh, circulating the place by uh -huh. fire of heaven. Oh, when you walk in there, you will walk out truly set free. What I'm talking about today. What am I talking about today? The world can't get free because the church ain't free. That's, That's what I say. That is correct. The church is not free. Excuse my Ebonics. <laughs> I said the world can't get free because you going over to Beyonce concert and Jay-Z concert and Kanye concert and whatever is on the inside of them, you are being impacted by their devils. I said it. I said it. I said that. We need a house back into holiness. Mm -hmm. We need people that are on the altar offering prayer day in and day out. If you really want the heavenlies to come into your environment, mm -hmm. if you really want God to come on, come on, come on, show up for you and give you your miracles that you've been praying for and sowing your seed for, ah, God is saying tonight, what are you willing to do for me? Something you've never done before. What are you willing to sacrifice for me? Oh my God, because he's willing and he's ready. Are you willing and are you ready? Are you willing and are you ready? Pastors, God is saying, get back prayer in the building. Apostles, God is saying, get back prayer in the building. Prophets and prophetess and evangelists and pastors and teachers, God is saying, the people of God need the apostolic fivefold ministry. The people of God, they need to be able to feed off of what God is streaming through those who he has called in the end times to get the church together. Lord have mercy. If all you have is a prophetic ministry and that's it. There's no apostolic oh, work. Hallelujah to God. Nation. Oh my God. There's so much going on. Uh, today things are so lopsided. If I had a church, I'm going to bring in an evangelist. If I had a church building, I'm going to bring in a teacher. If I had a church building, my God, an apostle will come stand on the, on the platform and teach my people. See, what's going on today is the folk are imbalanced because of the leaders uh, are afraid of the new generation. Uh, the old is fighting the new. Oh, come on, somebody. They don't want the new to rush in, and God is trying to, to bring the new in so that the old that will do a new thing. Uh -huh. Shall ye not know it? God is doing a new thing tonight. Are you ready for the new? You think you've exhausted heaven. You cannot exhaust heaven. He's too great. He's too big. He's too vast. Oh, sit yourself down. What we need to do is humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Let God be God and every man a lie. God is God. He don't have to rewrite the book. Mm -mm. The book has already been written. Oh, yes, he don't have to rewrite the will. Mm -hmm. It's already been sealed. Okay. Huh? Oh, y'all don't want to hear me. In fact, tonight, uh, Daniel said that seals are being yeah, opened for the end time it. generation. She oh, are you, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? For the seals That's to be so broken. Okay. That's the revelation. Oh, that we're my about. God. Go ahead. That's the revelation that we're talking about. You can go ahead, you know, because, you know, as you're locked in, you just, you know, keep going. Don't stop it. Are Don't stop ready? it. In here is. Are you ready? <laughs> it's Are you ready? I mean, it, you know, intense. God is, I'm telling you, I see myself. God come and show me myself. Leading people in prayer. I'm seeing myself before the masses, leading them in prayer. He pray. said, lead my people in prayer. He said, watch this. He said, them all prideful folk that are going out in my name. He said, I didn't send them. Watch this. He said, I didn't send them. Watch this. He said, I just want you to lead my people to me, daughter. Lead my people to me in prayer. That's he said, be, I do not need them to heal the land. If you lead them in prayer, I'll heal my own land. Y'all don't hear me tonight. God said there were things that I would do myself. 
but I'm looking for the people to position themselves and walk in obedience. God said enough of the witchcraft church, enough of the rebellious church, enough of the charismatic witchcraft, enough of the division, enough of it, and let me have my way in my church. Step aside until I show myself faithful to my own people. We are talking about the true church that he will build. Can we stand down? And allow him. Can we stand down? Can we relinquish power? Can we relinquish authority and the power? Can we Jesus. relinquish fame? A lot of men and women of God don't know that God has exalted Jesus Christ. Not themselves. And gave him a name that is above every Ooh, other name. Oh my God. You go out there to promote your name, oh dear, you keep abasing yourself without knowing. Because you are competing with Christ. God has given Jesus Christ all the power in heaven and in the earth below. It's not negotiable. It cannot be shared. Because God will not share his glory, people of God. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. This A lot of people of God are calling for the power of God. Give me power. Give me power. For what? So that you can show off and get people to worship you and bow down. And see that you can do miracles, signs, and wonders. The glory of God is used to bring down nations. And not only nations. Because an individual is to also represent a nation. Out of one man, a nation is given birth to. Some of you are supposed to go to nations and kingdoms, but your leg will not touch those nations and kingdoms. Because you will take the glory of God. Today we have demonized deacons running the church. Oh, yeah. The witches on the deacon board are telling the <laughs> pastors... <laughs> You better not preach this way. Yeah. You better not bring in those people. You better not bring them in. They are witches on a deacon board. That's correct. And God didn't tell. Listen, I can shut this stuff down tonight. I know what the Lord has shown me. You See, when speak God speak to me, I know what he said. He said, listen, I didn't call a deacon to run my church. But they are running the church, the man-made organizations. And people are getting entangled. And the in this people thing. that are in them are dying like flies. Mm -hmm. Getting cursed in there. Tonight, God is speaking. Will you listen to the trumpet or will you try to smut it out? Yeah. There are people today that you've made popular, but God ain't there. That's correct. The spirit of Ichabod is there, but because they got a whole lot of people that know how to play instruments, that's why we don't have music playing right now, because we don't want the noise. When you get the noise, and you get everybody shouting, and you get all these things, you can't really hear the spirit, because sometimes nothing. the spirit speaks in a still, small voice, mm -hmm. most of the time. And now God has to come with his trumpet because you've been ignoring the still small voice. Oh, yeah. Well, now. <laughs> now the trumpet is sounding. Exposure is happening all over the church because people have deviated from the truth. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to give people a few more chances before the Let curtain is closed. Close it up, yeah. As we know it. Beholding his glory, you will go through an enormous amount of pain and pressure and affliction and discomfort and all kinds of disappointments on your way to the glory. That's correct. Jesus, before he was glorified, he had to die. And you have to die. That's why we're telling you, if we can see you, then you're not dead. If we can see you, you're not dead. We need somebody who has died so that Christ can live through them. Oh my God. To take us to him. If, it, if we're leading you to ourselves, then we have failed. Yeah, yeah, we are not dead. We are alive. And today people are leading people to themselves. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is nowhere to be found. That's Jesus dangerous. is saying, I'm looking for my people. Where are they? Well, 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 where's my people? Where's my worship? Mm -hmm. No, you're giving them, them, you're giving men the worship. You're giving men the worship. You're giving men the worship. We don't know the words of Christ because they stay away from those scriptures. 
When it comes down to your relationship with the living God, you better know his voice. You better know his words. You got to know his heart. It's not just about working for him and prophesying in his name. After you finish prophesying, he said, I'll tell you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. After you finish casting out devils even, don't you know that you can cast out a devil, people of God, in the name of Jesus, and it will come out? Yeah. Do you know that? And you can still look like a devil because the devils are responding to the name of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. not you. <laughs> Never be tricked to believe that the demons are obeying you. <laughs> Tonight, we have to cast our crowns before the living God. Your life. As we are beholding his glory, as we are going there, as we are reaching out for him, there will always be times where God will ask us for something. That, that will, as we're going closer to him, what are you willing to give me? I've been through this where I was giving God so much, so much, so much sacrifices, so much sacrifices. And I was crying and I was hurt and I was broken from the inside. I was in so much brokenness. I was in so much brokenness to the point where I was literally devastated on the inside. And then God spoke to me out of a storm. He took me in my dream. And he tossed my body through the waters and my body was flipping upside down and flying so fast. And he spoke to me out of the clouds and he said, in this next season, you're going to have to give me your all. You're going to have to give me your best shot. I came out of the experience. And I couldn't talk for days. Because on the inside of me, I had given so much. And this great God would say to me, not you've done a good job. Thank you so much. But. He said, he didn't say that. He said, in this next season. You're going to have to give me your all. I said, my God, I didn't know how to, I didn't know. I did you, oh my Lord Jesus tonight. Some of us, God is calling to be his burnt offering. Can we offer our lives in the pain, in the suffering? And that's why I tell people, you know, don't desire a person's anointing if you can't desire their suffering. Because I can guarantee you this. They had to be crushed for the real anointing. Imagine. So if you I'm want ready. someone's anointing, you better get it ready for everything they had to walk through. Here it comes, baby. It's about to smack you in your face. Can you handle what they've been through to get that real anointing? See, we don't really want the cross. We don't really want to be glorified. We just want to say, oh, Jesus did it all. That's the confusion in this hour. Because Jesus, the master, told us that we will have to pick up our cross. If you can't hate your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your child, your this or that for me, you're not worthy of me. That's the words of Jesus. That's right. Can you drink the cup? <laughs> Jesus wanted to give up the cup himself, but he said, mm. nevertheless, not my Jesus. will, but your will be done. Mm -hmm. And so today we don't see many people functioning in that kind of realm. We don't see many people functioning in the realm of Christ. We see what? We see little celebrities running around here with entourages acting like they're bigger than Jesus himself. Listen, go sit down somewhere because that, none, of that, none of that stuff flatters me. None of that stuff turns me on. None of it turns me on. Anybody can get money to make it look like God is blessing. You know how I know it's being blessed? 
Uh, how you have been broken. Uh, That's how I know if God is blessing you. I want to hear about what you've been through. Then I can tell you if the blessing is upon you. It ain't about the money. You can get a big loan, you know. Get, 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 the, get the people to come and give, you know. Come on. Y'all give to fake preachers all the time. People setting you free and y'all don't give nothing to them. That's why the ones that say what we're saying, they're not on the top. Can I talk to you plainly tonight? They're not on the top because why? You don't give to them. You give to the pastors that won't wrestle with your devils. Oh, come on. <laughs> Y'all give to the rich. God said, curse be those that give to the rich. Y'all don't want to give to the ones that trying to make it out here. That's trying to get the real gospel in your ears. <laughs> uh, the ones that will stay on the phone and labor with you for three hours to catch the devil out. But you don't want to give them your tithes and offerings. You don't want to help them to build. You want to go give to a celebrity out there that's already wealthy, sitting up in five mansions. That's what y'all want. You should go to this man man mansion. So we people. tell people today, go to your pastor. Please don't come to us. That's right. Why? Why we do that? You know why? You know why? We want you to learn. Because the one who you are serving or worshiping or whomever your idol is, that, that's where you go. That's where you go. Tonight, we're not afraid of, to say this. <laughs> oh, we have no. people right now that are be calling us to answer their questions, interpret their dreams, cast out their devils, come to the hospital, and they don't give us a dollar. <laughs> but they don't have their pastor's phone number. Come on. We have people right now that want to call us our first name because they're older than us. They don't have no regard for us. They don't have any honor for us. That's why they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't do anything. But it's okay because if we worked for you, we would have been left out of here. We work for the master tonight. What I'm saying is our priorities have to come back in order. This is all about Christ. It is all about him crucified. And it is all about are oh, we going to carry our cross to get to the places in which God is trying to bring his church. And you're not going to see many people carry the cross because it's an old rugged cross. It's not a bling bling cross. It's not fancy. It's not pretty. It's not cute. It's a lot of pain to it. It's a lot of suffering. It's a lot of giving when you don't want to give. It's a lot of, you know, what I'm saying to you? Uh, listen, tonight, we've been in here laboring over people's lives. They don't give a flip about us. <laughs> they won't even share a video. I said it's painful. The cross is an old rugged cross. You can't pay us for what we've been through. The cross of Christianity. It hurts. You're going to suffer. That's right, Sister Vivian. And you're going to suffer long. Long suffering. <laughs> if we're showing you an oh, oh, entertain, you know, oh, go, go, go. It's your time for success. How mm -hmm. you going to get success when those principalities are got a rope around your neck telling you you are never going to break out of our control? You're going to need a higher rank to come and break that stuff off of your life. Someone who had to battle those spirits at one way or the other at one time in their lives. That God gave them the victory over those powers and now they can help you. But you don't regard them. I know people right now don't give a flip about me. I see them. I see them. I see them. They come and get our stuff and they go and teach it. They come and get our stuff and go and write books as if they're the ones that got the revelation. Oh, it's painful over here. It's painful. So we got to copyright everything because you go and get it copyrighted and you know it didn't come from you. The devil is a liar. You won't prosper in that thing. You will not. It's not possible. Oh, it's, it's, it's long suffering. Oh, yes, it's carrying the cross. Ministry is carrying a cross. You are working for people who don't care about you. They only want the fish and the five loaves of bread. Mm -hmm. oh, how many have I loved? Jesus. When he multiplied the fish and bread, they came to eat. Thousands. 
And when it was time for his head to get cut off and they were coming for him, there was nowhere to be found. Well, where were the multitudes? None of them were there that day, none. You're going to have people that come to take and not give back. It's a cross. This is a cross to carry. Yes. You want to work with your gift and you want to be known and you want to be a title and this and that, well, honey. A healer. Uh, we lay our crowns down. Miracle walker. Tonight, it's about the Christ. <laughs> if you don't know the Christ, I don't care what title you carry. I don't care what kind of gift you have. You can prophesy what kind of, listen, curtains I have, sheets I have. You better not prophesy nothing else better than, li listen, li you can prophesy whatever you want to prophesy, but if you don't know the Christ, you can't carry his cross. No business prophesying in the first place. Today, we got to go full circle. The trumpets are blowing. Get back. The trumpets are blowing. The <laughs> prophets are prophesying. The real ones and the fake are, are prophesying. That's the problem. We got the false, the fake, and the true prophesying all at the same time. Mm -hmm. The fake ones are the ones that were never prophets. They just prophesying. The false ones are the ones that started off right, but then they deviated. They, they got yeah. off. So and then the true up. are the ones that nobody want to hear from. That's why you don't see many people tonight. But the ones that ain't saying much of nothing, the ones that won't labor over you, they got 20,000, 100,000 followers because that's what the world wants. That's what the church wants. The church wants someone to entertain them and tell them that the blessing is coming. Mm -hmm. And we're telling you that if you don't get your life right, the blessing won't it's come. It's not coming. That's the difference. So tonight, people of God, to get to the glory, are you ready to carry the cross? You may have been in that fire, but I told you last night, the consuming fire is coming. You know who that is? God. That's himself. That's God. Hebrews. The consuming fire is God. Hebrews 12, so you 11. come from the fire of affliction, but God steps in with you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do you hear me? I want God. Come on. I want God. That's what I want. I want to know that I've done what he asked me to do. I want to know that I did my purpose. I said what he wanted. No matter how heavy the cross was. Now I want to hear. Well done. Because that is ultimate glory. If I can hear well done. Then I wasted Your life. my life, my tears, my sweat, my energy. Everything. I wasted everything. Are you compelled to go harder? Are you compelled to want to know him more? Are you compelled to want to take time with him more? Are you compelled... Are you compelled in your heart to say, we're going to get prayer back in our churches? Are you compelled? Are you going to raise your children in prayer? Are you going to stay up 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning to fight, to pray, to stand on your post, to be a watchman? Are you compelled now? We want souls to be saved and healed and delivered, not entertained and played with and miss God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. As we are going to behold the glory. There are things that Jesus died for to give us access to it. We need to access it. But we can't access it without going the process that he has for us. And this fasting is a part of it. Because it's not easy. When the tummy is growling and your head is hurting and you are hungry, you just want to eat, you are carrying your cross. When everybody is eating 
around you and supping and partying and doing all these things and you are saying, God, none of me and all of you. There is a reward for you, people. Mm, mm, mm. Your reward. They will never be able to have your reward. Your suffering is not in vain. Jesus' suffering was not in vain. <laughs> he endured the cross for what was set before him. Endure. Because there are your rewards that are set before you. You will reach them if you faint not. If you faint not. My God, tonight. Every one of you, every one of you, God is calling for something peculiar. Every one of you. I am not tricked to believe. And everybody who stay with me, who stay with us, we know that the hand of God is upon your life. And that's not a cliche. God has something very special for you. Your pain is not in vain. Your suffering is bringing forth the real oil. Not the gimmick oil. Not the fake oil people are selling and when you put it on your head, nothing happens. And you get contaminated. Those things are dangerous. <laughs> yeah, biblically, you're not supposed to. There's a reward. There is great recompense of reward. And it's coming. And it shall not tarry. As you are moving up. As you are growing in grace. My God. Hmm. You will see things. In this life. And the life to come. And everybody cannot experience it. It's only for those. Who've sacrificed their lives and love not their lives unto the death they died yeah. they died for christ today we have live your best life yeah. live jesus said if you can't lose your life you won't find your life <laughs> listen at the words of the christ come on people of god don't get hyped up off this gin and juice that they're teaching down here. Gin and juice. We're losing our lives by sacrificing. That's why we're fasting. Because my life is, I want to get up and I want to have this big, beautiful breakfast that tastes so good. And I want lunch and I want dinner and I want this and I want that. And I'm giving up my life to God. To consume me. To take over. And to rule supreme. Whereas other rulers were ruling my life. Before I want God to rule in every area of my life. And a lot of you don't want Christ that way. That's why you're not 100% delivered. Because you're still flirting around with some things. That you know you have to let go of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Consume me, oh God. Consume me, oh God. If we get back to this place, oh my God, he will show up and the ministers won't even have to do much. We don't have to lay hands. We don't have to do much because when the real glory lowers, the, when the kabod of God comes, your miracles, your healing, your prosperity, your destiny, all these things will be secured. All of these things, you will experience it when the real glory comes. When the real glory of God comes. What he's looking for is for us to bow down and make him the Lord of our lives. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going home empty, guys. 
I will empty out everything the Lord told me to give up. I will empty out my life. I will empty it all out. I will say it. I will do it. I'm going home empty. I want to hear, well done.
Oh, hallelujah to God. Mm. We thank God for all of you tonight. We thank the Lord for every one of you. We are praying for you. We are laboring. Tonight, we're going at it again. Before we go to sleep, we are we are going to be up. We don't go to sleep till about what time? Most nights. Three o'clock, four o'clock, five, six a.m. So, when we say we're going to be praying, we will be praying for you. And um, we can't wait to see what the Lord is going to do in your life. We want you to see the hand of your God. To dry your eyes. To take away your pain and your afflictions. And to raise you up in the end time. To show forth his glory. We love you. Stay with us. We're only going to build up momentum. We will do roll call on tomorrow to see who's with us, who will continue with us. Please come to the website to see what we're doing. If you would like to support in any way you can, you're not pressured. We'll be praying for you. God bless you.